This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God's word that we're going to meditate on this morning is printed there for you. It says, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Let us pray. May the meditation of our hearts and the words of my lips be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. If I want a garden full of fresh vegetables, of tomatoes and cucumbers, of squash and onions, well then, I'm going to go and buy the appropriate seeds to plant in the ground so that I might reap the appropriate harvest. I'm not going to go to the store and find the package of seeds with the prettiest flowers on the front and expect that then, if I plant those, I will come up with a crop of tomatoes and cucumbers and so on. And likewise, the other way around, if I want pretty flowers, I'm not going to go and purchase onion seeds or plant onions. I'm not going to get the harvest that I desire. The world knows these planting principles. You and I, we know these planting principles very well. But sadly, much of the world forgets these principles when it comes to it comes to what they really want to get out of life. So many spend so much time planting and growing and trying to cultivate things that they will not be able to take with them out of this life. And sadly, too often you and I have done the same. That we have been busy working on and planting and trying to cultivate the wrong thing. Today, let's remedy that. Let's let's be reminded of what it is that we should be planting and growing and cultivating in our life. Let's try to answer this question. What is it that we really want to get out of life in the end? God was asking that question of Solomon. God appears to Solomon and he, he asks him, He asks him this amazing question. Solomon had just taken over the throne of his father, King David. King David had overseen a nation that was becoming a superpower. Israel was coming into its own. They were expanding their borders. Things were good in Israel. But David had also learned, King David had also learned, that he was not going to be the one to build a great temple to the Lord God Almighty, the maker of the heavens and the earth. He was disappointed to hear that, but he also had heard from God that his son Solomon was going to be the one who would build this this wonderful structure, this temple to the Lord. Solomon has a bright future ahead of him. Life is good in Israel, and life is good for Solomon. It's in that setting that God shows up and comes to Solomon in the night. In the middle of the night, he gives him this one wish. 
In so many words, God says to Solomon, what is it that you really want out of life, Solomon? What would you have responded with? What would you have asked God for? For wealth? Health? Long life? The death of your enemies? What would you have asked for? Would you have given the perfect answer when someone says that you have one wish? Would you have asked for more wishes? In a sense, that's what Solomon asked for. Solomon realized his situation. Solomon realized who was asking the question. It wasn't a genie that was coming out of a lamp that asked this question of Solomon. It was the almighty maker of the heavens and the earth. And Solomon recognized his situation in life. He sees that he's in charge of all of the people of Israel, too numerous to count. He didn't even know how many subjects he had. He was the commander-in-chief. He was the PR director. He was the HR director. He was, he was the head of the board of education. He was, you get the point? He was in charge of a lot of things and a lot of people in Israel. And he realized his situation. Especially the fact that he was so young. Add to all this that he was a youth who was given all these tasks and all these responsibilities. There must have been days when Solomon woke up and just hoped that he wouldn't make a mess of all of it. He knew he was not equipped to face all these tasks. And perhaps what's even more wonderful and more amazing about this story is that he recognized this great king of Israel, one of the greatest kings this world has ever seen. He recognized what? In verse 7, I am only a little child, he said. That compared to the one who had given him these tasks and these responsibilities, he was only a little child. He said, I am not fit to carry out my task. I'm only a little child. I do not know how to carry out my duties. I'm sure you know the feeling of being overwhelmed, don't you? When you feel like the plate is piled too high of all the things that need to be done or that need to get done, and then God comes along and He piles on one more thing, and then maybe another thing, and then maybe something else. The list of our responsibilities and the tasks that God has given to us can be overwhelming. Between being a child a student, a spouse, a parent, a mother, a father, a, a boss, an employer, employee, a citizen, a friend, a neighbor, a Christian. Just right there in being a Christian, think of all the tasks and responsibilities that God has given to you just in the fact that you are a Christian. You are called to serve one another. And not just to serve one another, but to serve others in the world. All that God has placed around you in your world. You are called to be an ambassador for Christ and a missionary for Christ. To share His love with others. Just in that title of being a Christian, in that task of being a Christian, is quite a bit of responsibility. Add to that all of the other ones of being a student, a child, a parent, a spouse, a neighbor, a friend, a citizen. You know the feeling of being overwhelmed as we just sang about in that hymn all too well, don't you? And you might very well fit in saying with Solomon, O oh Lord, I am not fit to carry out all the tasks you have given me. I'm only a little child and I don't know how to carry out all my duties. And then you get to verse 9 and I think I always learned growing up that Solomon had asked for wisdom. Maybe you were taught the same thing. And, and you read in there, the new translation says, he asked for a discerning heart. Literally, the Hebrew says that he asked for a hearing heart. He simply asked that God would give him a heart that hears. He asked for a heart that hears God. And in that sense, 
he was asking for, in that sense, he was asking for unlimited wishes because he knew and he recognized exactly who the one, who the giver was of all the gifts that he had and that he was receiving and that he would receive. These gifts came from God. And in that sense, by asking for a heart that hears, he knew that there, was, there were unlimited gifts that were going to be coming his way. We heard last week in the, par- or in the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000, we heard that Jesus' gifts to us, they multiply and they satisfy. And Solomon seemed to understand that. That in asking for a hearing heart, he knew that he would get unlimited gifts from God by just knowing God's counsel and God's wisdom. And God was pleased with his request. So pleased, in fact, with his request that he said, on top of that, later in the, in the book of 1 Kings, it records that God said that he would give Solomon riches and fame and and wisdom in all sorts of a variety of sciences to the point where people would stream from nations afar just to hear him talk about biology and and vegetation and plant life and animal life. He was given wealth beyond compare. If you consider 25 tons of gold coming in as income every year to be wealthy. Solomon was blessed beyond measure. God decided to bless him in this way when he asked for a heart that hears. That was God's decision to bless him in that way. Solomon asked that he might grow in his faith and his administering of his duties, carrying out all his tasks by having a heart that hears. Tell me, do you fall into the same trap that I do at times? That you treat God like a vending machine? That we put in our prayers, we put in our list of requests to God as we would put a coin into a vending machine, and then we have a certain outcome that we expect. We have a certain outcome that we desire and hope for, and we expect that it's going to come out the way that we planned it, or the way that we hope it will go, or unfold. And then what happens when God has other plans? Then what happens when things don't unfold the way that we ask? We put in our list of demands to God and things don't unfold the way that we had hoped. Now it's certainly good. God does encourage us to bring all of our requests and all of our prayers to Him. He wants us to ask and pray for anything and anyone. But shouldn't we first, before we put in our list of questions and demands, shouldn't we first have a heart that hears? Shouldn't we first listen to God speaking to us, listen to His Word, and listen to His his love for us? And the forgiveness and the peace and the joy that are ours and His will for our life. Because oftentimes when when we get overwhelmed by all of our tasks and all the responsibilities that we have, if we simply go back to God's Word, we often find answers and relief and peace in God's Word. We learn to follow His will. Is it beginning to make sense, perhaps, why why this story was chosen for Christian Education Sunday? Think of all the opportunities that you are afforded every week to train your heart to be a heart that hears. All the opportunities that you have on your phone, on your iPad, on on that coffee table to just open up God's Word. You're in the right place to begin your week here on Sunday. Because here you sit at Jesus' feet, you're able to listen to God's Word and you see how from the cross sorrow and love flow mingled down to you. The sorrow that Jesus felt on the cross for your sins and mine and His love, His forgiveness, His peace that comes to us through what He did. And you see in your service folder that insert, the cardstock in there, that has all the different opportunities, some new opportunities coming in September, how you can sit at Jesus' feet and have a heart that hears.
in our Bible studies, we have an opportunity to be guided by God's counsel. Go back to the psalm that we read earlier today, and I'd like to look at that with you just briefly. Open up your service folder to Psalm 73. I don't have recorded in there the beginning of the psalm. At, in the beginning of the psalm, the psalmist looked around at, at the wicked prospering, and he, he, he was envious even of them. He said it seemed as though their life was going well, that they were carefree. Life seemed to not be a struggle for them. In their evil ways, they even prospered. He seemed, it's, it seemed as though life was good for the wicked. But then it, he goes on to say, Then I entered the sanctuary of God. In other words, then I, heard, I went to church and I heard God's word and my worldview changed on things. While they were prospering in this life, it says in verses 25, or I should say in verse 24, he realized God's counsel leads him to glory, to heaven. And what is it that you and I really want out of life? We want to enjoy heaven when it all ends. Not only for us, but for also for our children. We can't take anything with us out of this life except souls. And in this psalm, the psalmist comes to the realization in verses 25 and 26, Earth has nothing I desire beside you, O God. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And finally, he realizes that it's better to be growing in our faith than the alternative. One of the verses in that psalm also says that those who are far off will be destroyed eternally. There's really only one alternative to be growing in our faith, and that is to grow further away from God in our faith. And so the psalmist calls us to follow the counsel of God. It's only through the continual study of Scripture do we have a proper perspective on this life. That's the purpose of really our book fair today as well. So that you might have a, a proper worldview of how does our faith, how does our faith as a Lutheran fit into everything that's going on around us. Many of the books will help you to, to see how do we fit in to the world around us today. You would expect that a lottery winner, if they have the winning ticket, would take that ticket and cash it in. You and I have the winning ticket. We have all that we need, God's counsel to guide us into eternal life. Should we not then pick it up? Pick up God's word and, and live as though it is the most important thing in our life because in the end, it brings us eternal life. If your wish is for your children, for you and for your children to have a heart that hears like Solomon then won't we continue to read Bible stories to them when they are young? Won't we pick up God's Word for ourselves to read during the week? Won't we bring them to Sunday school so that they might continue to know of God's power and His presence, as in the story of Jesus calming the storm, so that they can have that with them as they go through their whole life? But if you want your children to only gain worldly wisdom, and to only focus on college degrees, then act that way. Make, make, make it clear to them that their homework for school is more important than going to Sunday school or learning Bible stories at home or more important than their confirmation class homework. If your wish for your children or for your grandchildren is, is to gain only worldly status and fame and fortune in this life and to forget that they are dearly loved children of God, forgiven children of God, which by the way they need more than ever nowadays in this world that's struggling with identity. But if, if you outward status and fame and fortune are the most important thing, then act like that. 
Then make sure that, that you only focus on appearance and clothing and make sure that, that they only are running with the, the right group of friends that's going to make them have the status that you want them to have. If your wish is that they be self-centered and slothful or lazy, then give them the option of sleeping in instead of going to church. Give them the option of not hearing God's Word in place of Sunday school and youth group. And adults, adults, well, look at 1 Peter. Look at that reading from 1 Peter. If we want to stunt our spiritual growth, if we want to stunt the spiritual growth of those around us, well then, we should engage in all sorts of malice and envy and deceit and hypocrisy and slander, and especially within our own church family. And then, then we will stunt not only our, spiritual, our own personal spiritual growth, but those around us. But you, dear friends, you did not come to learn of Christ that way. You were washed, you were cleansed in the blood of Christ through faith in Jesus, through that imperishable seed planted in your heart. You have faith in Jesus Christ. Water that seed by going back to God's Word. As Peter says, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you will grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. We have tasted, have we not, that the Lord is good. And so let us pray continually that God might give us all hearing hearts that listen to Him and His Word. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith.